this was kind of interesting how this particular circuit worked out. You know, I started with the Scori Tifatronics setup and I was using some different MOSFETs and I eventually pushed them to see what they would take and I believe I drove them up to about 40, 45 volts from the ZVS supply before the FETs kicked it. I decided <clears throat> I would just pull these from a flyback driver I was using at the time just to see what they would do. These are some beefier, higher voltage FETs that came from another TV board. Um, I've got a really complicated part name on them, but uh, upon seeing I could get some decent arcs, I wasn't able to reconcile the drive part of the circuit with the interrupter part of the circuit and that was mainly because the way I had this circuit working wasn't really quite how it was supposed to. It would surge high amps into a very fast discharge at the top load um, but as far as a continuous wave run mode it just wasn't wasn't very good at all um, so basically the idea was to pulse it at the power rail with a capacitor um, that is reaching a high enough voltage to uh, based upon the gate tuning here to trigger that that pulse um, so that's why from the ZVS supply it worked pretty good because I've got a run capacitor on the output which is doing that pulsing and it's not able to recharge at the lower duty cycles fast enough for a, a continuous run um, so what I had to do was put the PWM on the power rail and that was pretty much how I could simulate what was going on by pulling the gates to ground using an interrupter um, it just wasn't working with this setup I have to it's going to take me a while to get the, all the right fits and the rest of the components to actually replicate any of those circuits but for now this is how this one's working out you know the it's a basic test setup I've got pretty much the same circuit I had originally I've got sort of a fat capacitor right here I pulled from a TV board also through a couple high voltage fast recovery diodes along there just to, hoping that will help protect it a little bit and I could actually probably tune this a little better but I'm just gonna leave it where it is um, so basically what I noticed here is I can run this with these transistors in this arrangement over 45 volts I haven't really uh, tried yet but you know with with any legit supply other than the ZVS but right here I've just got this supply it's pretty low it's um, doesn't put out crazy juice but it works fine and at 30 volts the way I've got it set now it's working off 30 volts so while it's a little higher voltage than the other circuits are running from um, the amp draw is pretty low given this setup because you are indeed pulsing the power rail and it's in that instantaneous time window of pulses the oscillation builds up and everything happens how it's supposed to and then restarts so you're basically setting the frequency by the frequency of the PWM on the power rail and as far as the duty cycle goes there's not a large window you can change there you know the duty cycle needs to just be very small and all that's doing is giving the circuit just enough time to charge up this capacitor and discharge that capacitor so this the the run capacitor essentially turns into a timing capacitor you could say so you know with this setup the way it is if I turn the duty cycle up too high what I see is multiple pulses like that yep and I got arcing over see the arcing down there all the way down there the primary was arcing real bad so you see I've got sort of a, a pulse train of multiple pulses there in duration and that's because that duty cycle is up a little higher and it's it's on for longer than the circuit needs to charge and discharge one time bring it down low enough then I can adjust the speed of the pulses up to the frequent a certain limit of the frequency that I set in the PWM and it'll spark according to that frequency so if I want longer discharges I just up the voltage and I don't really have to get into a crazy high voltage range I can stay under 50 volts to get pretty good discharges and since it is being PWM at the input you now it's just even less power so ends up being very low power
Now, one thing I just noticed that's cool about the PWM is that, man, I can get super close to this thing, unlike a lower voltage Slayer exciter that'll just knock the phone out, no problem. Yeah, I can get close to this thing. But the downside with this setup is I have to really crank the voltage up closer to 50 volts to see beefier arcs. These arcs are not very beefy and they don't show up very well on the camera unless I cut the lights down real low. Um, I suppose that's how it is with a lot of them, but it'd be nice for me to see a much beefier arc, which is what I'm going for um, once I get the uh, proper components to replicate. 